Welcome to Singularity. Today, we dive into the most advanced and secretive project in the world of aerospace, the SR-72 Dark Star. It's fast, it's powerful, it's officially under development, and it could redefine everything we know about air superiority. If you thought the SR-71 Blackbird was the king of the sky, wait until you meet its successor. Let's take a moment to appreciate the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. Born in the 1960s, developed by the genius minds at Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, this aircraft was decades ahead of its time. It flew at over Mach 3. That's more than three times the speed of sound, around 2,200 miles per hour. It could cruise at altitudes above 85,000 feet. That's high enough to see the curvature of the Earth. With twin Pratt and Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, it could accelerate while cruising at Mach 3, a feat no other manned aircraft could do reliably. It was in active service from 1966 until its retirement in 1998, and in all that time not a single one was shot down in combat, because honestly nothing could catch it. If a missile was launched, the Blackbird's defense wasn't to dodge, it was to outrun it. This aircraft defined speed, stealth, and elegance, but even legends eventually retire. Now, with rising tensions globally and new threats emerging every year, the United States is once again pushing the limits of aerospace. The answer is the SR-72 Dark Star. Designed to succeed the SR-71, the Dark Star isn't just a spy plane, it's a statement. And this time, it's not science fiction, it's officially under development. We're talking about a machine capable of hitting Mach 6, that's nearly 4,600 miles per hour, twice as fast as the SR-71. At that speed, it could fly from New York to London in less than an hour. To fly that fast, the SR-72 has to fly high, higher than 90,000 feet, almost at the edge of space. And at those speeds, heat becomes a major issue. Friction with the air alone will heat the skin of the aircraft up to 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's enough to melt most metals, so the aircraft has to be made of ultra-advanced materials like carbon composites and titanium alloys. Every inch of the craft has to survive and perform in extreme conditions. Now, how does it go so fast? The magic is in the engine. It uses a revolutionary propulsion system called a turbine-based combined cycle. Let's break that down in a simple way. At low speeds during takeoff, it operates like a turbojet, similar to regular jet engines. As the speed increases past Mach 3, it transitions to a ramjet. Ramjets don't have moving parts. They use the high-speed air flowing in to compress and ignite fuel. Above Mach 5, it shifts to a scramjet a supersonic combustion ramjet, which burns fuel in supersonic airflow. This combination allows it to go from the ground to hypersonic speeds without needing separate rocket boosters or engines. That's game-changing. But the SR-72 isn't just about going fast for the sake of it. It's being developed for very specific missions. First, it will serve as a reconnaissance platform, a next-generation spy plane that can gather data, scan enemy territory, and deliver information in real time. Unlike satellites, it can change its flight path on the fly, dodge weather, and respond to threats dynamically. But there's more. The SR-72 is also expected to have strike capability. Yes, this plane might carry hypersonic missiles, maybe even tactical nuclear warheads. It could enter hostile airspace at six times the speed of sound, deliver a devastating strike, and exit before enemy defenses could even react. That kind of ability shifts the strategic balance entirely. Imagine a future conflict where the SR-72 is deployed. Enemy radars light up, but within minutes the plane is already gone, and it didn't just observe. It left behind destruction, hypersonic strike, no chance to defend, no time to retaliate. That's not just speed, that's power, that's control. It gets even more interesting. The SR-72 will likely be designed with both manned and unmanned options. That means in extremely dangerous missions, it could fly without a pilot on board, completely remote or AI-assisted, a pilotless aircraft traveling at Mach 6, delivering payloads with pinpoint precision, all while the human operator stays hundreds or even thousands of miles away. That's the future of warfare. Fast, flexible, and unmanned when needed. And this isn't happening in isolation. The SR-72 will operate alongside the next-generation fighter jet, the F-47. While the SR-72 takes the high-speed, high-altitude hypersonic route, the F-47 will dominate lower airspace with stealth, 
agility, and digital combat systems. Together, they form an unmatched team. The SR-72 scouts and strikes from above. The F-47 fights and commands from below. Air superiority from every angle. This partnership ensures that the United States remains far ahead of any competitor in terms of aerial dominance. Whether it's China developing hypersonic missiles or Russia testing next-gen fighters, the combination of the SR-72 and F-47 sends a clear message, don't mess with the skies we control. Now let's talk timeline. A working prototype of the SR-72 is expected to fly by the end of this decade, possibly as early as 2028. Full operational deployment could begin in the early 2030s. And if some of the rumors and mysterious sightings near Area 51 or Edwards Air Force Base are to be believed, test flights might already be happening under wraps. Either way, Lockheed Martin and the U.S. Air Force are moving forward, and billions are being invested to make this aircraft a reality. And just to be crystal clear, this isn't just Hollywood fiction. Yes, the SR-72 made a brief appearance in Top Gun Maverick as a stealthy hypersonic concept, but what we're talking about now isn't CGI. It's a real project with real engineers, real prototypes, and real strategic implications. If successful, the SR-72 will give the U.S. a unique capability, global reach at hypersonic speed, without detection, with lethal force. It's about showing strength. It's about keeping peace through overwhelming technological superiority. And yes, it's about punishing any hostile nation that dares to challenge that peace. So what do you think? Should the SR-72 be piloted or fully autonomous? Do you believe hypersonic aircraft are the future of warfare? Or will drones and AI take over entirely? Could a plane like this really carry nuclear missiles and escape before anyone reacts? And do you believe the SR-72 could already be flying in secret? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your take, your questions, and your ideas for the next episode. Should we do a full breakdown on the F-47? Or maybe cover hypersonic weapon development around the world? Or how about we explore the shadowy world of secret U.S. projects like the rumored TR-3B anti-gravity craft? Whatever you're curious about, let us know. And if you found this fascinating, informative, or just straight-up cool, do us a favor. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you never miss a deep dive from Singularity. This is your home for aerospace, military tech, sci-fi concepts becoming real, and the bleeding edge of defense innovation. Remember, at Mach 6, the sky is just the beginning. Thanks for watching. This is Singularity. Stay sharp, stay fast, and stay ahead.